so I'm determined to play Minecraft Bingo. Now, I do agree that my mouse is unresponsive. However, I think the command block and all the things that Minecraft has to do to make Minecraft Bingo work is intensive on my computer for other reasons, such as my internet speed, that sort of thing. Um, there's cat hair on my microphone cover, the little uh, foam rubber wind socks. I might be picking at it because it tickles. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So I'm still a lot slower, and in recording, I still have a lot more frame rate drop than I do playing like on Fault Symmetry server, which is also 1.8 with OptiFine. I just don't get the recording quality that I ought to and it affects gameplay. Right now this version I took a screen cap of Brian did a video of what the map looks like and so I took a screen cap. So the screen cap is right next to me as I'm playing the game which helps a lot and even with a copy of the map right beside me it's still difficult for me to orient to what I should do next especially since I started in a dang taiga and there's not a lot of food there's not a lot of nothing you know so r running around is going to be required i haven't planned a strategy i don't think at first at least that i should say i'm going to get this row column or diagonal i don't think that's wise i think that it puts too much pressure on me Especially since I never know what biome I'm going to end up in and what's around me. I think it's best if I play the game organically. Which is to say, to try to stay near spawn if possible, but roam around the area and look for anything that is on the map, just easy to find. And then I can do things like start going mining. Now in this case I made a mistake and started going mining before I'd made a pick and had to walk all the way back. So I lost a little bit of time there, but oh well. I was also kind of looking for clay. I don't know that clay ever spawns in water features in Taiga, but I figured it was worth a shot looking. I'm trying to be gentle with myself. There are a lot of tactics involved in making tools to do it expeditiously how you place, how many sticks, that kind of thing, but that's going to take practice and I'm just going to take my time. If you put oh, certain numbers of iron in certain slots, you can make your chest plate and your boots and then do it again with the um, pants and hat and you can just go click, click and they come out. I almost mined those blocks and then I realized that's my spawn point, those two blocks there. Apparently those automatically generate. I don't know. I'm trying to use my peripheral vision to look around and see what I'm not seeing directly because on the edges of the screen one tends to see things at a distance easier than looking directly straight ahead of oneself. So I'm doing a little bit of that. I was kind of hoping that maybe since there's an outcropping of exposed stone Maybe there might be a coal deposit as well, so that's why I dug so deeply when I didn't really have to. Why go shallow when you can go deep and see into the area as much as possible, right? Um, oh, I'm going to take credit for having invented the poke hole. It was uh, assumed to be made by another YouTuber, but I've been doing the poke hole method of mining for a very long time. And apparently that other YouTuber has seen my videos. Well, you know, with this game, everybody finds stuff. And there's only so many things you can do with this game, right? I mean, it's a computer program. It's not... You have a tremendous amount of creativity and flexibility in this game. Still, there are going to be times when people discover things simultaneously or concurrently. And it's hard to say who found what first. Mumbo just went through that recently. Somebody got on him about a contraption he built and oh Seth Bling invented that well Mumbo can't watch every video ever made Mumbo never said that he was the first person to come up with it he just built the contraption and said here's this interesting contraption you know what I mean so there's a lot of uh, 
Even amongst the fanboys and fangirls, there's a lot of competition for who's the best. Which is really kind of silly because on one hand it is a competition, but on the other hand, it's a very cooperatively made game. Our playing of it has influenced the game tremendously. I'm not going to fool around if I can't find coal. I want torches mostly, not even for video quality, I want them so that I can make a line back from spawn to wherever I ended up last in case I died. However, I do die in this video, but it took so long before I died that it wasn't worth going back, I decided. And I, I mean, I went back to spawn, I started to walk back toward my stuff, and I thought, no, this video's too long, I'm not going to do that. So I promised you the videos would be about 20 minutes in length. And they would end if I died, they would end if I got the bingo items, and they would end if they were over 20 minutes. So, that's my policy. The only reason I'm putting this video up is not because it's a good quality video or that I did an excellent job on the bingo game. The only reason I'm putting this video up is because of the discipline of knowing that I'll be playing the game, that it is being recorded, and that it will be viewed by other people. Uh, I need to overcome the pressure of that, the self-consciousness, the nervousness of knowing that I'm being recorded and will be seen. I deliberately use my 8-bit texture pack to keep as much lag down as possible. My render distance is on 8, even though that means that when I have the sky view, I can't really load too many chunks or surrounding environment because, obviously, 8 chunks. So... I'm doing everything I can with this game to keep it from being as laggy as I possibly can. This is a good computer and it responds well. Uh, Bingo is just really hard for me to see how choppy it is. There was clay. Um, Bingo is really hard for me to play because it just breaks up. I think it's the command block in combination with my poor rural internet. I don't have any other reason. It just doesn't happen on servers and it doesn't happen in 1.8 single play as long as I'm using Bandicam. Mostly I'm trying to listen for critters. I'm listening for um, dungeons, uh, I'm listening for cooties, I'm listening for food animals. And we have our first suspect. Dead in cave, but I thought I would check it anyway just in case I heard something. A lot of people run over the tops of mountains and trees, but I think, again, looking we'll for clay. Didn't realize I could also use sand because there's bottles in this map. Geez, no. A lot of people tend to run over the tops of uh, tree forests along the canopy. They also tend to get up on hills and stay up on hills. They get up there for a good view. Thank you, chickens, for having been around close enough to me to have pooped out an egg. Um, but I like to stay low, if I can, as often as I can, because I'm listening for dungeons. And one never knows. There was clay over there. I'm having a hard time seeing. I've learned a really great way to mine clay in um, on False's server and on Zombie Cleo's server. I go down into deep water features like these with ladders. Just stand there in a ladder spot and grab all the clay I can reach so my shovel works quickly and I don't have to worry about drowning. I'm listening. I heard skeletons. Somewhere in this vicinity I heard skeletons. I can't remember if I dug down there or not. I'm watching this video after oh several hours and I don't remember exactly my gameplay. so. I'm watching it fresh, just like you. It's a memory thing. Yeah, I'm listening for skeletons. I do remember that. Again, I'm not so much consulting the card as I am consulting the environment I'm in. Because the environment will inform me of my strategy. It turns out that my best was the top row and the fourth column. Either one of those was going to be viable, and the items just pretty much came to me. If I hadn't died, I had enough iron to make a minecart. If I hadn't died, 
uh, and been able to smelt the iron, the, well, still, the top row or the fourth column would have still been viable to me, I believe. Good thing for Cody. The only way I'm going to get better at this game is to keep practicing. I've been working on bad equipment for a very long time. I'm not really sure how to work on good equipment. So, it's a learning curve for me. I, like I said, it's like learning to play the game all over again. Also, this mouse is poorly responsive. This is a wired mouse because my cordless ordinary mouse finally pooped out. So, I have a wired ordinary mouse. Um, not the best equipment, kind of flimsy and awkward because I'm learning how to play with a wired mouse while lying in bed. So now I have basically three cords. I have to wear headphones when playing Minecraft, especially when I'm hunting cooties, so that I'm sure my directions are proper. I do have computer speakers. I'm not sure if they're set up in the right direction, right to left sound. Um, and I mostly use those on like Pulse's server and Clio's server just to know what I'm doing. I don't like wearing headphones. It's physically uncomfortable to have that many wires connected to me. I've got the keyboard, the headphones, and the mouse. So I'm getting physically used to the setup. I have to lie in bed. I can sort of play sitting here in this chair, but it is physically uncomfortable. I haven't figured out a way to do it yet so that I don't have to strain and reach. I should not have even bothered with that torch. I'll probably take torches out when I leave the tunnel, if I know me. Yeah, Paul Sword says, a hole always leads to an adventure. Well, to me, a dead end always leads to adventure. I usually have the best luck at the dead ends of caves. And, of course, you know how I am about bait ores. If there's a good collection of ores anywhere, they might mean there's something beyond them. Same with gravel. Gravel is usually obstructing either another passageway or quite often gravel is used to obstruct a dungeon. Although, of course, I don't hear anything dungeon-like down here. So make some poke holes and that leads back to where I was. Digging around because, you know, ores are sneaky. It's worth the time, I think. Wish I'd put a torch so the video is better. I'm sorry about that. More poke holes. At the end of the vein, always make poke holes because you don't know. Especially in things like this. A few tall area that gets exposed or one of those belly buttons. A donut where it blocks all the way around with a hole in the center. I always check those for goodies. The bats are confusing me because there are bats with me, but it also sounds like there might be bats behind the walls. And there's my skeleton. See, the skeletons are really close to where that gravel is, and it's... But the gravel seems to be at a corner with two walls exposed, so shouldn't I have seen something by now? At least I figured out I need torches. So mostly I'm uh, mining for iron, because almost everything I need is iron related. If I had done that fourth column, I would need lots of iron for rail track. I'm going to need lots of iron for the minecart. And I have no reasonable expectation that I'll get low enough or lucky enough to find an abandoned mine shaft with a minecart already in it, since I'm not looking for any particularly rare or precious things that require me to go down low. So bingo for me is trial and error, and it's getting used to uh, body memory. And of course with the new mouse, that's going to be a whole different thing. 
because that new mouse is going to be completely different than anything I've been used to. It's on the way, by the way. It's going to be completely different than anything I've been used to. It's going to have a lot of extra buttons on the mouse that I can configure for various things, for, for one thing. And eventually it will make my gameplay a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. But at first it's going to be stumbly and bumbly as I learn my way around. So basically I'm, what I'm saying is I'm learning how to play the game all over again. But I want to be good at Minecraft Bingo because there's so much switching of tools from particularly pickaxe to shovel, but also from tools to weapons. I want to get good at it quickly. I want to have my uh, items on my hotbar the way I want them so that I can always quickly scroll back and forth or get the numbers keys now that I have numbers keys or whatever attributions I can dedicate on the um, mouse buttons. I'll get better as I go. I was thinking since I'm hearing those skeletons behind this gravel, I guess it's worth taking out the gravel. My food and health are fine. But creatures have had a chance to assemble while I've been trying to find them. This is always an issue. Remember, I'm squishy. I have no armor. They're very close. I have to assume they're behind the gravel, but I'm going under the gravel just in case. I'm really close. So I keep looking up to see if they're up there. Nothing up there but outdoors, really. If it's taking that long to hunt, is it really worth it, you know? Took out too many torches and I'm disoriented. I know I'm near the surface because I hear the chicken. So I just figured, okay, well, I'll come up to the surface. I'll try to remember to lighten this video in post. Also, my gamma got messed up because I uploaded that hermit, downloaded that Hermitcraft world and Zuma had it set to moody. Oh, God. How can anybody record in moody? Anyway, so in readjusting my in-game light levels, it messed up the uh, text file that says how I want my gamma. And now is when it all goes nuts. So I have to go back into my text file and readjust my gamma. And in the meantime, things are going to be dark. See, that should be loaded. That shouldn't be like that. I shouldn't be seeing through the world. But it will make it easier having these torches to figure out what direction I was, perhaps reclaim some of my items, and get back to work. It's one of the benefits of not going too far from spawn and circumnavigating, just circling the area. Unless, of course, like, if there's jungle way off in the distance and I need cocoa beans, well, heck yeah, I'm going to go off of, over there. But leave a trail of torches, so hopefully, hopefully, of course, in the jungle, what good are torches? I mean, it's especially in the daytime. At night it would help, but not during the day. See, slideshow, I can't even see the skeleton. Couldn't even see the skeleton. So, for some reason, the video cut off here without my permission, but it restarted itself. Maybe because it was so framey ratey that the frame rate was so low that Bandicam shut off and then restarted. I'm trying to go back home. I'm still nervous and I'm having trouble touch typing. Ha uh ha. -huh. But that's how far I got, which isn't bad. Um, if it had all been up and down, yes, I'd have had a bingo. Yay. So we're getting better. I even had the bowls for the soup. <laughs> all right. Thank you for watching. I'd hug you, but my arms don't bend.